So I love Christmas. It's one of my favorite holidays. I look forward to it every year. And there's this subgenre of Christmas horror movies. So today I'm going to watch the 2018 film Await Further Instructions. I don't know the cast. I don't know the plot. All I know is Christmas is involved in some way. Um, if you have any other suggestions for horror movies you think I should watch, please comment below. And if you want to have a say in what movies or TV shows I watch, be sure to join Patreon. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. Yeah, I don't recognize that name. It was a very ominous intro. It just said the things that you love will kill you. Okay. Is this a British film? Just with the way they're driving. Unless it's like just a different angle of that same road, but it looks like they're driving on the other side. Staying. Please say you will. Um, We'd love to. She seems very... Either he doesn't come home very often, or yeah, he seems very... Uh, anxious. Oh my, power surges. Let's just take a look at some of the pictures of people being sent. Merry Christmas, Gramps. Hi, Mr. Milgram. Is that Miss... Um, he was in Harry Potter. Um, Is this gonna be like Get Out, where, you know, they bring the par meeting the parents for the first time and then things go horribly wrong? Besides, our mobiles are conked out, so... So your phone wasn't working all last year, then? He hasn't talked to his dad in a year. Or three years? Oh my gosh. I'm an office manager. I'm an office manager. <laughs> Trying to like still prove himself to his dad, who seems like he was quite harsh on him. I've got all those treats. You'll spoil your dinner. That's the point of Christmas, just non-stop eating. Oh, Gramps, love you. Smile for the camera. Give us good gums, Gramps. Yeah, give us good gums. Yeah, <laughs> he hates this. I want you to think it's fine. Who wants tea, Alfred, Nick? He's like, I've been instantly regretting coming home. It'd be great till all them Johnny Ahmeds and Bobby Bongo Bongo started coming in. Yikes. You come in here with your two malts and your bloody pumpkins and syrup. Kate, shut up. Hey. Jesus. Yeah, I think Christmas is over. Why does he have to apologize? No. Come on. Forget this noise. Yeah, see y'all later. Yeah, and these power surges they mentioned. Something suspicious. I'm enjoying it so far. It definitely feels like an indie film, but I like indie films, so I'm curious to see where that's gonna go. <laughs> Poltergeist, is that you? Uh... It feels fuzzy. Yeah, mine too, actually. They weren't like drinking or anything last night. Oh my, what the heck is this? I think it's metal. What? Surfs is so weird. Aliens? Are we doing like alien spaceship or something? Looks like it's been fitted on purpose. Kids? Then what's that? Uh... Oh my, I would not. Keska say. Oh, it's by all the windows, too? What? They're like trapped in there? Yeah, all the windows and doors are surrounded by this. It kind of reminds me of like the Matrix grid code. But yeah, so yeah, especially with the green tint. Yeah. The only one here with any sense whatsoever. That would be so bizarre. Yeah, they're trapped in the house and like the axe wasn't doing anything. Like, how do you get out? And there's not like enough. There's not like a foot distance where you could like somehow get something out of the window. Like it's right up next to the house. Do you have a little doggy door, cat door? Only the government could manage something like that. Still doesn't explain the pipes. They break into every room. Oh, that's terrifying. It's a vent in clean oxygen, couldn't it? Why would they? Yeah, why is there pipes in every room? Weird. Scott, if you could that one. I'm calling the police. I'll check the news. 
Like they think the government just has the exact window measurements and door measurements of your specific house in case of emergency. So I've riding every channel. Hey, that's the name of the movie. And our phones are still working. There's just no network. Or why have all the clocks stopped working at the same time? Oh, that's a swish. At 3 a.m. Oh, always a sketchy time. Mine yet. Yeah, and this like eerie green glow. Yeah, like you said, like the TV's not knocked out, like it's still working. It's just there's no channels, there's no news. The only message that's playing is this, basically. Uh, yeah, sure time, no worries. You see, I need to know that you'll back me. And he's not asking his own son? We're men, Scott, and sometimes we're called upon to do things that no one else will. Is he asking him to form an alliance? Oh. Yeah, like, I guess, like, what else would you do? Like, you can't go anywhere. They're just literally waiting for their instructions because that's what they've been told to do on the TV. Where are, like, the paper crowns? I thought those were very, like, UK Christmas things. Such a flu, Gramps. You got your wrap round the pinky. You struck good and proper. Oh my God. That's incredibly rude. Look. All of your food is contaminated. Eat nothing. What? Oh my god. They're watching them. To entertain your... How long do they get like, what, you can go like a week without food? Yeah, and of course she's pregnant, so... Oh my gosh. Oh, you're always telling everyone what a man you are. Here's your chance. Prove it. If the food is contaminated, wouldn't they also, the humans also be contaminated? And like, what about their water? For the holidays, so we'll, we'll rush that. Well, I hope that lasts long enough. Well, we'll cope. They've just like accepted it. They're just like, we'll okay, wait. you want us to wait? That's cool, we'll wait. Like, they've given up trying to figure out what's going on. I don't know how they would anyway. Like the internet's not working and phones aren't working. So I don't know how you would, like they can't get out, they can't see anything, so. But it's not so easy when there's no head office to check in with, is it, Squelcher? It's definitely, is this gonna get like Lord of the Flies situation? It's authority. Didn't do you any harm, did it, Squelcher? It's like, oh yeah, if you would have been uh, horrible to your son, maybe he would have grown up to be horrible to other people. Great. Strip and scrub all flesh with household bleach. Oh God, no. Get the cleaning products. This just, oh my god, just like the complete, like, absolute obedience to whatever the frick they're saying on this screen. Yeah, it's an interesting concept of like, if you just trap people and tell them to do something, will they do it? You know, with no promise of like, oh, you'll get out or, you know, there's no reward or anything. It's but yeah, it's just like, hey, we're telling you to do this, do this. And like, how far are they going to push that basically before people start to say no? Or what happens if they say no and don't follow the instructions? I'm sorry, too. I was nervous about meeting you. Oh, oh my gosh. Angela. Cheese and rice. It's jump scares. Hypodermics. Right, because she studied medicine. Vaccination kits. Atmosphere is polluted. So, so who's going to do it then? Doesn't that mean they could potentially escape out of the fireplace? This sensibly. It's an order. It's a from someone you don't know. Yeah, exactly. Dangerous unsterilized medical equipment is. It's like I was raised not to ask questions. I was raised to just do what I'm told. Yeah, they've already been used, which is not comforting, obviously, and you have no idea what's in them. Who are these people that made the vaccine? Like, so bizarre. Like, how far do you trust this anonymous source? Mom, please don't. So does that mean they're going to be allowed to go outside if they get these shots?
I'd be curious to see what happens if they start to ask a question to the TV. Like, would it respond immediately? It seems like they're watching them, so... Like, it warned them right before they were about to eat. I would just, like, shoot it past his arm or something. Yeah, pretend. Oh, maybe not. Maybe they did it for real. Guess we'll find out. Now we're safe. Because the strange man on TV told us so. Yep. Bye, Gramps. Oh my God. He said it was a trial. Oh! As soon as the last person takes it, of course, because you wouldn't have taken it if you saw these effects. Ah! Uh, oh! It's like black tar. Oh, cheese and rice. <laughs> vaccination procedure complete. So the plan was for them to kill somebody during the vaccine? Oh my god. <laughs> or just like statistically one in eight would have adverse effects to the vaccine. What's that? In the door. Wow, great graphics. Just cover the body and uh, collect up all the syringes. <laughs> and the fact that he's not affected by this at all, he's like, it's an acceptable loss. Like his dad just died graphically in front of him. He's like, yeah, it's acceptable. We're fine. Just not processing it at all. <laughs> Help! Help us, please! Access slot contaminated. He's like, do not stick your fingers in our access slot. I'm just saying. I just can't understand this. Go by. Clean. Clean off. Squelcher. I don't know what that means. Comment below. I'm sure it's got to be British slang for something not good. I can't breathe with the baby. Oh my god! One of you is infected. Mom, say something, please. Yeah, she's checked out. Even if they quarantine Angie and it's not the right one, are they gonna say something? <laughs> oh, bonked him. Oh god. Verily the sky is written with angels singing. Hello. Odd time to burst into song, but it seems to work. They've stopped fighting. Yes. That's a bit of a leap, Ange. Think about the timing, though. Yeah, they're reacting live, basically. I think you should try switching it off and on, just to see what happens. No. Yeah, maybe they're listening through the pipes. Yeah, it's interesting how they've incorporated green instead of red, like the two, you know, stereotypical Christmas colors, green and red, and especially red and the role that usually it plays in horror movies. So, yeah. Oh, it did turn off. Okay. Oh, now it switches to red. Interrupting emergency signal put lives at risk. <laughs> But from who? Like, who is his enemy? There's nobody breaking down the door. There's nobody, like... It's them against each other. Oh, God. Oh! Oh, no. Oh, God. <gasps> oh, no, 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 no. <gasps> Her leg! Oh my god, her leg is definitely broken. And the TV's flashing red now. Let me think. How did this happen? We need to let Angie out, she's a medic. Angie's infected. And yeah, every time they fight back, something bad happens. Whether through their own means. Oh! Terrifying. I see you. Oh my gosh. But it wasn't 
the TV that caused this. It was the boys fighting that caused her to fall down the stairs and get hurt. So, or fall over the banister. She's my child. No one burst through the door. No one, you know, attacked her. It's them attacking each other, which I think is terrifying. Sounds like sepsis is set in. Oh God, no. If we don't get Kate medical attention soon, she'll die. Yeah, and the baby will die also, obviously. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it looks like an older TV, but somehow they are watching them through the screen or something. Yes. He's just locked himself away, hoping everything- he's organizing his bookshelf, hoping everything will be fine and... Reading up about the human race. Siege tactics? What? Yeah, I'm curious if this is happening to other houses around the neighborhood or if this the, these guys are chosen for some specific reason. Ah! Uh, yeah, he knows what they're doing. He's like, what are you doing? We didn't say that was okay. It's like a spider? Oh god. Dad, you've got to see this. Something moving for sure. Dad. Oh my god. Stay calm. Oh my god, he just punched his own son. Are you okay? Their loyalty now lies with this invisible authority figure and they've just turned on each other completely. Like Go and see what the uh, television says now. Yeah. Whatever the TV says, that's what we'll do. Is that it? I'm dead. This dad clearly struggles with anybody doubting his ability or thinking he's less than- Oh my god! <coughs> Jeez, I don't think he'll be coming home for next Christmas if he makes it out of here. Oh my god. It's your own kid! Like, what are you doing? This dad's got some anger issues for sure. Extract information from a sleeper agent? Oh my god, so someone in the house is a spy? <laughs> so now they think that he's the sleeper agent, obviously. They're gonna torture him. Oh my god! Well, if you were um, questioning going home for the Christmas holidays, I don't think this will convince you. Yeah. Dad, Scott, Dad, stop, please. Uh, ah! Oh God. Don't be off anymore. We'll take an eye. They won't make him talk. Wait, Tom, you, are you sure? Oh my God, his eye. Manipulate you. He's just so like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, no, 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 not the eye, not the eye! Oh, they're all cameras? What? That's terrifying. We've got three dead so far, two people injured, like one person quarantined for whatever reason. If anyone's gonna make it out of here, it's gonna be Angie. Yeah, will she get her own messages if she plugs in a different screen? <laughs> Activating quarantine. What does that mean? They're gonna gas her. Oh my god. All survivors return to ground floor. Oh my god. Oh my god. What did she see in the back of the TV? Oh god! Terrifying! They have a map of your house too? Yikes! Ah! 
Of course, there's gonna be like 30 keys on this one keychain too. Who's he gonna say first, his mom or, oh my gosh. He's gonna break the glass. Yeah. Oh God. Oh, it's like burning her face. Oh, oh! She exploded, her whole head just exploded. Nope, she's gone. Reborn? I bring salvation, resurrection. Show us your hand truly upon us. Oh God, the baby's moving. We were guided all along. Tested harshly, yes. Very Old Testament, okay. Ruby. Ruby, that's the baby's name they were saying. Oh my God, they were listening. Stop. They've been listening this whole time. Something living. Like a creature, I... <laughs> like a heart beating. Ah. Uh. That same thing is in the TV out there. Yeah, what happens if you kill it? Yeah, kill the TV. I'm wondering if I'm wondering if it's playing into what they already believe. Like, if they had believed in a different religion, would it have included, you know, common phrases from that religion, or if they would have believed in something different? It feels like they know these people very well, so they're using what they believe and what they value against them. Make a sacrifice to save the unborn. Oh my god. Very Old Testament. No, 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 no. Come on. Let me perform a cesarean. She is the only one with medical experience. Oh my god. He just took an axe to Scott. Oh god. He's just a murderer. He's just had this rage built up this whole time and now he's just getting an excuse to let it out because the TV says it's okay. Oh! Bonked him. Okay, good night. Yeah, if they kill whatever's- Oh! Okay, bye dad. Rage. He looks like Beaker the Muppet. You had no choice. Yeah, you gotta kill the TV. Smash it with a hammer! Whoa! It's alive! Whoa! Is anybody gonna make it out? Ooh, that's like the shards of glass look like teeth. They're gonna take the dad into the TV. Oh, that's so crazy. These like wire heartbeats and arms and legs. Yeah, it's like a little claw, but just a bunch of cameras. Oh God, oh God, through his mouth, ew. What? The TV's bringing his dad back to life? That's terrifying. The TV's like reanimating the dad and putting the axe back in his hand. Oh! Oh my god. Now the TV's gonna talk through his dead dad. That's so messed up. This last act has been insane. Now, or face your extinction. That's so cool. It's so messed up, but it's such a cool set. Oh my god. Worship me your face extinction. It needs us. It's a parasite. Oh. We're the only ones left. It needs a host to survive. 
That's why they've been killing each other. Oh, oh! No! Oh, God, they got our foot. I thought we were done. I thought he killed it. This guy just won't die. Oh, God, they're taking over. Yeah, they're doomed. See you later. Anybody's gonna make it out. It's not looking good. Robo dad over here is just now collecting all the electronics for the baby. That's all they're after. They don't seem like they're gonna be great parents. I'm not gonna lie. And now he's sitting on the chair that his dad was sitting in. Oh my gosh. Grandpa's chair. Oh, not the baby. Oh, God. Um. Ooh. Mm, I, I, I feel like they're going to get the baby. Oh, my God. They ripped off her skin. Cheese and rice. That is what we all look like underneath. Uh, oh, my God. That is the most disturbing way I've ever seen to deliver a baby. Hello, Ruby. Oh, it's a girl. And Ruby's now gonna plan world domination? Worship me. Yeah, like, oh my gosh. And that's crazy how you can see the reflection of the TV in her eyes. Oh my god! Well, I guess they got their way. Okay, it is other houses. I was wondering. Oh my gosh, so creepy to pull back and see that like green glow. So that was my first time watching the 2018 Christmas horror film, Await Further Instructions. I really liked it. The Christmas setting was basically just to get them all together. The house was decorated, obviously. There was a couple scenes where they sang Christmas songs, but that was pretty much it. But I didn't mind it. It didn't feel like they needed to be super heavy handed with Christmas and decorations and stuff. You still got that feeling of coming home for the holidays and it sounds like Nick our main character hadn't been home in a while so he was apprehensive about going home and of course this is the one year he decides to go home and all of this stuff happens the body count was insane the only person to survive was Ruby the baby but even that wasn't really guaranteed we had no idea what was gonna happen I assumed once Kate died that the baby would die as well but somehow this TV was able to bring it back to life and then the way that they just like melted all of Kate's skin off basically to give birth to this baby so creepy definitely had some sci-fi elements in it with this tv coming to life and these like cable creature snake spider things crawling all over the house very bizarre um, it kind of reminded me of the matrix a little bit just with that green glow and when you got in super close to the cables it kind of looked like coding and poltergeist obviously with the tv coming to life and the tv playing a very heavy role in this film like the tv was a character in itself and even when we see them pull back the tv and there's like that heartbeat of wires and stuff like technology coming to life almost i don't know if that's what they were going for they didn't really explain and I, I kind of like that it kind of leaves it open ended and up for interpretation I'm glad they showed the ending of having that aerial view of the neighborhood at least all being affected by the same thing I was wondering was this house specifically targeted was it because Kate was pregnant and they just wanted a baby for this world domination plan and how Ruby is going to worship this TV cable system basically and she'll take over at some point I'm not too sure and that was their plan but 
unless there's pregnant women in all of these houses. I'm not too sure why it happened specifically right now in this neighborhood. Again, questions we don't need to be answered. I feel like the movie still was a well-told story without those details. I didn't recognize any of the actors except for I think the grandpa was in Harry Potter. Uh, Mr. Fletcher, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, the janitor. So yeah, other than that, I didn't recognize anybody, but another well-done horror movie with one location, limited cast, and just a really interesting story. Once Angie and Nick pull up basically to the house and we see them go in, that's it. We basically don't go outside the house again. Obviously different rooms and different levels within the house. I didn't mind the one location. I thought they did a good job of telling the story. The pacing was good. They kept the audience interested. I wasn't like, okay, where's this going? I obviously had questions, but they did a good job of pacing it and making sure the audience was engaged. I feel like that's key if you have a limited budget and you want to tell an interesting story. You know, one location can still work. A limited cast, there was six, seven of them throughout the entire movie and the majority of their budget, I'm assuming, going to special effects and stuff like that, but so cool. And even like a short timeline, like the entire movie takes place over 24 hours, basically, with them arriving, staying overnight, and then the events all taking place the next day. And even with a short timeline of them arriving staying overnight and then even the events happening on actual Christmas Day and like they said like Christmas Day everybody would be at home with their families so that would seem to be why they picked that day specifically I still don't know why they picked that specific area of the country or if it was happening all over the world and we just didn't get to see it I was hoping Nick and Angie would make it out alive that was not the case obviously they were swallowed up by these cable snake monsters things that came through the back of your neck and then shot through your mouth and that last act was so creepy when they had the dad basically brought back to life and he's now this puppet for this cable thing that's wandering around the house and I can't imagine how disturbing that would be to see your dad who also tried to kill you a few hours earlier and is now brought back to life after you bashed him over the head with the TV and he's wandering through the house saying worship me worship me and you can tell that that person is no longer there like the eyes aren't blinking there's he's not moving he's only being held up basically through this cable which gave him that like super creepy floating effect and even the way that he was glowing from the TV behind him just so creepy. I thought the sound design was great. They did a really good job of capturing like this eerie creepy feel and they didn't go heavy-handed with Christmas stuff which I think is nice. I like the Christmas aspect but I think if every song would have been a creepy version of Christmas music it would have it would have been disjointed so I thought they did a really good job of keeping that kind of eerie background music and just keeping everybody on their toes. I really enjoyed the sets even though it was one location like I said I didn't get bored with it and that last shot where we have the cables completely come through the TV they've taken over the whole living room you can't even see the floor anymore it's just this black cabling everywhere and just the way that the whole film had very dark tones and the only real color we got to see was red and green which is stereotypical very Christmas colors. Um, green was for like good messages if you will and red was for scary messages like alerts which I think our brains are trained to respond to as red being scary already so definitely playing up that aspect and then when it was like oh like here's some trial vaccines you know it was in green and then anytime someone's trying to escape or manipulate the system that they have in whatever way it's red and flashing and terrifying and I thought that was a good way to incorporate Christmas colors but without it seeming like don't forget it's Christmas it's Christmas you know like I thought they did a good job of playing that it definitely felt like these cables were watching them listening to everything they were saying were reacting immediately like when they're about to sit down for dinner they're like don't eat oh just kidding oh don't do this and it's instant and then even when we have the POV of the end of the cable we can see like little cameras like they're almost like fish eye lenses and just so creepy just endless eyes everywhere and just making you even more paranoid just trying to figure out what's going on and you have no outside contact you're immediately isolated you can't escape and I really liked how they showed the progression of this situation and how things escalated and how it kind of starts off like you know what we'll send you further instructions and the dad's like okay it's government whatever something's going on let's just do as they say basically and wait we can't go anywhere we can't do anything anyway and then as things progress and get more and more insane at first the family all following instructions you're you're thinking okay maybe I would I what would you do in that situation you know like when they're sitting down to have dinner it's like okay would you just try and go on 
and you know you'll figure out as you go on so would you be alarmed right away or would you you know just wait for the instructions whatever they are you will follow them and then how they escalated them so quickly it wasn't like three months later after listening to the tv they're like worship us worship us it's like you know 12 hours later basically it's total destruction and chaos and it was such an interesting concept because it was basically Lord of the Flies where people were attacking each other. It wasn't somebody breaking down the door with a gun or an axe or anything like that. It was, hey, I've given you something to do and if you don't do it, something may or may not happen basically. And even when Nick says at the end, like it's a parasite, it needs a host. And that's definitely what we saw when it brought Ruby to life and it needs people to worship it. That's how it gets its power. That's how it's fueled. It needs people there and so it can't kill off the entire human race but it wants people who are only loyal to it and if you're not loyal well see you later basically so even when Nyx has that choice of saying worship or you'll become extinct he could have pretended but I feel like at that point it's just pure chaos and you still don't know even if you worship it what does your life look like basically it's terrifying to think that they are targeting babies and young children probably who are impressionable and will be raised in this culture of saying worship me worship me and that's what they will grow up to do because that's probably all they will ever know definitely themes of like father-son relationships and toxic masculinity in this movie as well as we saw the grandpa and his dad and the dad and Nick um, how they interacted with each other and the way the grandpa was we heard a little bit about how the dad was raised but it definitely didn't seem like a happy home and it definitely seemed like this dad grew up thinking he had to be tough he had to be a man he couldn't cry he couldn't show his emotions and like that's how he perceived to be an, a man basically um, and then when he grows up that's how he does to his son and that's why I feel like Nick had been so distant for so long staying away from his dad because his dad treated him like crap and was telling him like oh you got to be tough and you have to be all of these things instead of just accepting him for who he is and just fueling his head with all of these things and I feel like the dad had just so much anger inside of him when this happened he just let loose and the way he responded I think is just such an interesting character study the way he just blindly follows instructions and I feel like that's how the dad thought he was helping his family was just by following instructions and also doing what was best for him like he had such a fragile ego and wanted to be in charge and anybody who questioned his authority he was not dealing with it and having his dad over his shoulder just you know beaking in his ear the whole time and telling him this horrible memory of him you know when he was younger and just constantly bringing that up and just I can't imagine how horrible that would be to deal with and not that what the dad did is okay and the fact that he then turned on his own son and was about to like take out his eye because he thought he was a spy possibly and just such paranoia trust no one basically and just this chaos of the family dynamics and it's curious to think that this TV had been studying them like when they bring up the religion I'm curious to see if that's the case in every household or if a household had followed a different religion or didn't believe in religion at all like what would they have targeted for them to get them to obey basically because as soon as they mention you know like I'm your savior the dad was instantly like okay whatever you say I'll follow you blindly basically like he was sold he didn't need to be convinced it definitely felt like a very dark social experiment where if suddenly instructions show up on your TV do you follow them? To what extent do you follow them? Do you ignore them completely? Like, I wonder what would have happened if they would have just completely ignored all of the instructions. What would have happened? Would this gas have come in sooner? We saw that as a form of retaliation. And also when Scott put his hand in the cables to try and like rip it open to escape, they chopped off his fingers. So they definitely fought back, but not in such an intrusive way. It definitely felt like they wanted the people to destroy each other first while they just sat back and watched and I feel like they would have intervened like I said if they would have ignored all of the instructions but as long as they were following instructions they were letting them fight it out and like I said when Angie fell off the banister and broke her leg and ultimately died that wasn't because of this monster no alien creature or anything came through the door and attacked her it was because the boys were upstairs fighting and then she fell and that's how she got hurt because of what was happening inside the house so just super creepy 
would be super interesting to think of what level of obedience people will go to and the extremes that people will do this because they're being told to basically like it wasn't a question it was a command and if you don't follow my commands there will be repercussions even when he brought up religion I was like this feels like very old testament this is very much like do as you're told and don't ask questions which seems to be the dad's mentality anyway and that seems to be his life even when he shuts himself off in the study and is looking at like siege tactics and is you know going very much that direction and thinking how can I take over the house and how could I be in charge like that was his goal was to have total control over the situation instead of being there for his family. I thought the special effects were so cool and just amazing with the cables coming out and just the way that they reanimated the dad and just this tv coming to life and most people have a tv so it was just a creepy concept that felt like too close to home almost like next time you watch tv are you gonna be thinking oh the cables are gonna come out or a mysterious message comes up or if you lived alone like what would have been your instructions basically or would they have just killed you off right away because if you didn't agree to worship them that was their only alternative just like crazy to think this happening on a global scale I feel like this creature's motivation was to basically create a new population that only worshipped them basically just to target babies and young children who are impressionable that would worship them and that not question anything and create this army maybe um, I know it came out fairly recently I don't know if there are sequels or anything like that when they left it with Ruby and the TV right next to her I feel like they were possibly setting it up for a sequel but uh, yeah comment below I don't know if one is out I was thinking okay maybe it is aliens maybe this is a spaceship surrounding them maybe it is some government take over thing and I thought they were so clever with the way that they kind of let the audience figure it out along with the cast and when they would get a clue we would find something out and the only real evidence we saw before they pulled back for that last shot was it kind of looked like a spider it was like jumping and moving all over the house and covering the windows which kind of made me think okay is this one that's going from room to room as soon as they look outside is there multiple on the house it was just such an interesting concept on its own and then I love that they added in the Christmas elements to it as well and using that for why people would be getting together and the motivation for being all at home all at once but I think definitely on its own it would be interesting like this crazy concept of this experiment would be a very terrifying horror movie just to see how far it would go. It kind of reminded me of Saw in a little bit, like, oh, do you want to play a game? Like, hey, if you follow the rules, you'll get out. And if you worship me, you'll be okay. Like, just so creepy and the extent of what humans will do for survival and just this blind faith that the dad had in this TV telling him a message and just how much do you want to read into that and like media propaganda and just do you believe everything you see on TV and would you have followed along just a really interesting concept for a movie overall I really enjoyed it I love that they left some questions unanswered like why did all the clocks stop at 3 a.m and why were they feeling sick before and was Angie actually infected and what did those vaccines do they didn't actually go outside into the atmosphere or will they eventually let everybody leave the house once they decide to worship them just a really interesting concept and it was crazy to see people's responses and just the different degrees of what people would do because of what they're being told to do basically. I thought the special effects were great, the music was great, it was an interesting story. Um, I really enjoyed it overall. I love the Christmas elements as well with the red and green colors and that was why everybody was coming home but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me. If you have any other suggestions for horror movies you think I should watch please comment below and as always please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. This like eerie green glow. So that's what they've been told to do on the TV. Doesn't that mean they could potentially escape out of the fireplace? So bizarre. Like how far do you trust this anonymous source? Access slot contaminated. Reading up about the human race. So now they think that he's the sleeper agent, obviously. What did she see in the back of the TV? Make a sacrifice to save the unborn. 